Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour live on this chilly Tuesday morning. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and our toll free number, 800 951 the website at allamericangold.com. And, and, you know, you know the drill. You're going to call eventually. Sooner or later, uh, you're going to be understanding the need to make sure it's not how much money is in your retirement account. It's going to be how much does it weigh. Uh, the physical delivery of gold and silver, it is what we do. Uh, and, and listen, another big update, uh, new higher highs. Uh, keep going here with this pattern, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. Uh, right now, it uh, goes up about just under twenty dollars to the ounce, uh, and I'll give you all, I'll break all that down for you. But before I do, first of all, uh, kudos to Jason and Brian for coming out and, and covering for me on Friday as I was out golfing. Uh, welcome back to Arizona today. Obviously, Arizona was closed. Uh, we were live in Colorado yesterday. I, I'm working on it. I hope uh, in the next couple of days. We will have the link to the Colorado website on on the Patriot website here in the next couple of days. Uh, One of the things that we're trying to accomplish in the next, say, 90 days is we'll start podcasting uh, Colorado as well. We're just not quite there yet. A lot of things happening. Uh, We're very, very, very close to having uh, backup running at full power up there in Colorado. Uh, I better than today, I'm working on a new commercial for a new advertiser today. I mean, we've got new shows coming. Uh, So many great things. Tomorrow, this should excite everybody. I'm going to have a guest tomorrow. Uh, somebody that we all know and love. Somebody who makes radio better. Uh, of course, I'm talking about my uncle Eric is going to be in the building. Uh, I'm working on things. I've been telling you all, all along, I've been working on things. Uh, I'll just say this. I don't want to say any more than that. Support the program. It could go a very long way uh, and, 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 uh, that's all I'm going to say. I won't say anything more about it. He's going to be here tomorrow. It's possible that he could be here Thursday and Friday as well. We'll see. 800 Nine to uh, just a real quick look here. Gold's uh, thirteen hundred thirty-seven dollars, up nineteen dollars. Silver's up uh, about nineteen cents. Let's call it fifteen ninety-three. Uh, the Dow is down today. Uh, we did actually get a good number from Walmart. You know, you, when you think about it, can you get a bad number from Walmart? I mean, they're the largest employer in like half the country. Uh, but they had, you know, and I view it this way. Good numbers from Walmart are probably bad for us. Because when Walmart's doing the best, it's when people are like, hey, I got to go to Walmart because they're the cheapest. I normally, listen, I'd like to go to, to Safeway or I'd like to go to Whole Foods. Uh, but you know what? Money, money's tight right now. I'm going to go to Walmart instead. Uh, but Walmart did have have good earnings. Nobody else did, but but they did. Uh, obviously, trade talks continuing with China. But one of the things, you know, last week we had that really bad retail number uh, for December. And they said, oh, well, you know, there was a glitch. <laughs> right. Remember, Larry, I oh, was a glitch. Well, apparently the Red Book Index came out this morning. And, and, and again, I don't know all of these indexes and, and all the seasonal adjustments and everything else they do, but they reiterated what the government number was. They said 
retail sales down 1.2% in December. So, uh, again, they agreed with what the government had said. So, uh, I don't know. It's not looking so good now uh, for fourth quarter GDP. Uh, and that really kind of has the dollar down, gold running. Uh, and you start thinking about, you know, all the debt and everything else that we have to deal with. And, and you can see a very big picture. Here's where we are. I'll give you a technical breakdown. So right now, uh, 1350 is the, I guess, the next resistance point. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Probably the next uh, chance to maybe see some profit taking uh, in the gold market, 1350. Then when you break 1350, then we're back into that, you know, that range, that 1365, 1375 range. Uh, if gold breaks that, a matter of fact, if you go out to our website and, and pull up yesterday, towards the bottom, there's a great interview Kitco did with Peter Hug, and, and, and he's a, a, a huge gold trader. He, he just trades, right? That's what he does. He does, you know, he buys it, sells it, buys it, sells it. He says $1,500 gold, gold before the end of the year, and the catalyst will be uh, breaking through that 1365 to 75 range. Uh, so keep your eye on that as well. And that's why, like I said, you're going to call sooner or later. I, I suggest sooner because uh, you're just going to be paying less, and that's always a good thing. Uh, when we get back, I got to tell you, something happened to me this morning that I don't remember happening in, in a couple of decades. I'll tell you about that next. 800 So... You know, I get up to go to work, and as I've told you, we, we live in, in a development where apparently, and, and I don't know the exact age of the house, but, but it's, it's, it was built sometime in the 90s, okay, sometime in the 90s. Apparently, and, and I, I did not know this. Cars must have been really, really small in the 90s because uh, my wife's my wife's Escalade that's got 200,000 miles on it actually sticks out of the garage. You can't even close it. Right? It's like t- two feet sticking out of the garage. My, my Buick, I can get it in there. As long as I don't want to use the garage door to get into my house. And, and so our cars are outside in the, in the driveway. And and so when I got out there, you know, I look at the garage doors, and it's cold, right? And I, I get out, and I get in the car, and I thought I had, you know, condensation on the windows, and and I'm like, oh, you know, that that's not unusual. And I start the car and I I I turn on the uh the defrosters and, and I just hit the windshield wiper, you know, get the get the dew off. It wasn't it wasn't dew, it wasn't condensation, it was actually ice. Yeah. I, I I'm sure it's happened to me before. I, I just don't remember it. Uh, but, yeah, I actually had to sit in my driveway. I, it, I mean, it was completely covered the front windshield. So I actually had to sit in my driveway. And I, I'm not going to lie to you tell you. I had to sit there for 10 minutes. But I had to sit there for a couple of minutes until uh, the defroster defrosted it. So, yeah, it was a cold morning here in the, in the Valley of the Sun. It's been a cold winter. Uh, I saw Buffalo, New York. Now, for those of you guys who know, I grew up in Syracuse. Well, and I, you know, I grew up in a suburb of. And and I am a huge Syracuse homer, like Syracuse basketball, Syracuse football, big homer. But Buffalo, New York, is all my whole life growing up, right? Syracuse, it snows a lot, okay? It, it does, but not like Buffalo, right? Buffalo, it's right off Lake Erie, I mean... Buff, but as far as I, and I'm sure there's, I have no scientific evidence, and it may be, but if 
I believe it's got to be one of the snowiest places in the United States. It snows there all the time. Like, if, if Buffalo gets a foot of snow, it's like nothing, right? They got the best snow plow drivers in the whole world. They've gotten 100 feet of snow this year. The average, just to put it in perspective, they average like 30 feet. I mean, 30 feet, of, they got 100 feet of snow. It's incredible. It, it, I know the. I was talking to Brian and Jason earlier. They, they said it's snowing up there on the front range, and, and I love it. Bring it on. Apparently, uh, I don't know, global warming has taken the winter off. I actually had to run my defroster. So there you go. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. But uh, it was exciting. I mean, I it, it was. I it, Just something new. My car was, you know, gave me that. Again, there's no inflation in your car because I had a little light on. I, I did. As soon as I put the car in in reverse, it sent me a message on my dashboard. Uh, I see. You know, ice possible. And I wish I got to remember what it actually said. I think it's ice possible or something like that. And I was like, hey, no kidding. Wow. I, I get it, right? You know, but uh, anyway, 800-951-0592. So for a long time now, I've been hammering uh, what they've done to us. Right? They, they've robbed us. Listen, this is what the central bank does. It robs you of your wealth. Nobody gets the great stock market returns. You don't get them. I mean, you get a little bit of it. You know, I, I'll tell you. So you know what? That I was with my buddies over the weekend. One of them is a banker. Well, I should say he's a former banker. Uh, he now sells commercial real estate. Uh, but he's he, he left the bank about two and a half years ago. And he was telling me the story. He's like, double I don't get it. He goes, I had seven hundred thousand dollars. So here's a guy. Listen, that that th- that's about as big of a number as a guy I know, right? That's a, a, as far as people I personally am friends with. He's probably got the biggest four hundred one k that I'm aware of. He said but it was seven hundred thousand when I left, and it's still seven hundred thousand. I handed him one of my cards, and I said to him, I said, Well, when you left, the whole it was about eleven hundred dollars. Right? It's now thirteen forty. Give me a call. Uh, I, you know, but he's a banker. I doubt I'll hear from him. But nonetheless, he's like, it's still the same. It always works that way because I keep telling you, it's not for us. It's for them. I want to give you some examples. Right during this run, they 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 call them the Fang stocks. Right, Facebook, which has been getting hammered, and then Amazon, Apple. Netflix, Google, right? So the the thing, if you didn't own those five stocks, you didn't get a lot. Right? That's probably with my buddy Sean's problem. You didn't get a lot. Right? You probably own those stocks. Amazon, right? By far, right? The Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world now. Amazon, the largest company, I believe in market cap in the world, and I don't know, maybe there may be a Chinese company that's bigger. I don't know, but I believe they are. The world's richest man behind them racked up a profit of $11.2 billion last year, according to the company's uh, corporate filings. Do you know how much they paid in federal income taxes? They paid absolutely nothing. Matter of fact, it's worse than that. Not only did they not pay any taxes federally, due to a variety of tax credits a, and a significant tax break available on pay handed out in the form of company stock. Right. So think about this. It's already bad enough that they don't pay very well. It's already bad enough that they get all kinds of tax breaks and tax incentives. But today I learned they get a tax break for giving themselves company stock. Right? Maybe what they should do, wouldn't this be a great idea, that for every one stock they give to uh, their their muckety-mucks, right, the uh, the C-level guys, 
They need to match those in, in everybody else that owns their stock, right? Wouldn't that be great? Right? But, of course, that's not how it works. It's not free because you may actually benefit from that. They don't want that. Amazon actually received a tax rebate of $129 million last year, effectively giving it a federal tax rate of roughly negative 1%. Right? I'm in the wrong business. I, I made $11 billion, and they gave me a check. This is what's wrong, right? You want to know what's wrong? This is it, right? It's all these things. You know, they keep talking about reforming the tax code, and we're going to simplify, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. It's not made for us, right? They simplified it for us, right? And most people are finding out if you didn't adjust your withholdings, uh, all, everyone that didn't do that got a bad surprise this tax season, right? And that was unfortunate because they should have made that a big deal. But, of course, if they had said that to you, you'd have been, well, wait a minute. That's not uh, that's not the deal I thought I was getting. Hey, I thought I was going to get more of my check, and that was it. More of my check and everything stayed the same. Uh-uh. You got more in your check, and you didn't change your deductions. Uh, when you got time to go pay your or, or do your tax refund, or or even if you had to pay, it got your refund was was less. Or if you're a payer, you had to pay more. That was kind of one of those little little gotcha moments, right? That they always give. And and now we find out, right? But corporately, all this stuff continues. How does the? I mean, let's call it what it is, right? Amazon has been the greatest stock in the last. Half decade, right? I mean, easy, without a doubt. And they pay nothing. We're actually paying them. They made $11 billion. But here's the funny part. Think about that $11 billion. That's a lot of money. That's a, that's a lot of cake, right? That's a lot of cheddar. That's a lot of gold. That gets, what, a uh, couple of days, right? Amazon's the whole profit for the entire year get you a couple of days well and i should say this that's a couple of days of debt right not a couple of days of government right? the government spends so that's not even uh, uh the government probably spends 11 billion dollars in i don't even know probably just did it while i was talking about this story right? probably spent more than 11 billion dollars while i was talking about this story so it just shows you how microscopic this thing really is. For the second year in a row now, Amazon has enjoyed a negative federal tax rate on multi-billion dollars worth of profits. That would place the company's effective federal tax below the rate paid by the poorest 20% of households, right? Because they paid nothing federally, federally. And again, and I know a lot of you hardworking people get upset when, when, when you hear, hey, you don't pay your fair share of tax. You, you get taxed plenty. We get it. I get it. But we're just talking about federally. They said that they're, they're averaging a negative 1.5%. So this year, so last year it must have been negative 2% because this year is only negative 1%. Amazon, you know, they got to release a statement because then now they, you know, want to tell you uh, that it's not their fault. Amazon pays all the taxes we're required to pay in the United States. I got an idea. Uh, somebody needs to fix that run like now. And listen, I want Amazon to make money. I do. But come on. The richest company in the world and they don't pay any taxes? I said, I got to pay. And not only do we pay all the taxes we do in the U.S., we pay it in every other country we operate as well, including $2.6 billion in corporate tax and reporting a $3.4 billion in tax expenses over the last three years, the spokesman said. Well, that's a nice spokesman. That, that's nice. See, that's fine that you said you paid that. 
But then well, after all the rebates he got, he ended up getting a check. We have invested more than $160 billion in the United States. Good. That's great. You made $11 billion. Pay your taxes. And again, it's not Amazon's fault. It's not. I don't blame them. They got good tax accountants. And, and they should. Right? Everybody in listen, everybody should pay what they owe, period. End of discussion, no questions about it. But it's wrong, right? It's broken. This isn't supposed to be the way it works. How about this one? Netflix. You know, the other <laughs> right? the other big stock. And I never understood Netflix. They play movies. Right. And I know now you're now they, they, they actually make some some shows of their own. And all that, but it's still, you know, it's movies, and and why they're worth the the the, the valuations that they have, I, I don't understand it. But nonetheless, uh, they're they're part of that group. They did not pay one cent in state or federal income taxes last year, despite posting its largest U.S. profit ever. <laughs> don't worry. It's not for you anyway. Pizza Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, presenting a daily conservative pro family perspective since 1983 and continuing the legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now, here's the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. The prospect of space based military defense is an idea going back decades. As early as 1983, President Reagan used a nationally televised address to propose the creation of anti-nuclear technology known as the Strategic Defense Initiative. Democrats and liberal media quickly dismissed the proposal with condescending nicknames like Star Wars to describe the initiative. Among Reagan's biggest supporters outside the scientific community was Phyllis Schlafly, who heavily promoted the Strategic Defense Initiative as the final solution to the Cold War. Although SDI was not ultimately implemented as President Reagan envisioned it, there are more reasons than ever to pursue space-based defense military technology. Common sense will tell you that we have more at stake in space than we did 35 years ago. The skies are filled with more than 950 satellites controlling everything from televisions, GPS navigation, weather, credit card authorization, emergency response, and even scientific research. Without even realizing it, Most Americans rely on satellites on a daily basis to carry out the basic tasks that keep our nation moving forward. Imagine what would happen if a hostile actor managed to bring down these important systems in a coordinated attack. Such an attack is not a far-fetched plot from an 80s sci-fi movie. We're already under direct threat of our satellites being attacked. Since satellites have never, up till now, been the target of warfare, none of them are armored or come equipped with anti-ballistic technology. All it would take is one well-aimed missile to bring down a massive part of America's infrastructure. Just to prove a point, China blew up one of their own satellites in 2007. The issue is not whether space will become the battlefield of tomorrow. The issue is who will win when it inevitably does. President Trump acknowledges this simple fact. That's why he is working with Republicans and Democrats to launch a space force as the new sixth branch of the military. The technology already exists to make America the premier military force in space. We must revive the spirit of the Reagan revolution and support President Trump on his space force proposal. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. America is safe only when America is strong. Our national defense requires the most modern technology and best trained soldiers. And there should be no social politics or idle threats coming out of Washington. At phyllisschlafly.com, we take this work very seriously. Please visit phyllisschlafly.com. Thanks for listening and join us again for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. 800-951-0592. 800-951-0592. Uh, in case you missed it, Eric will be here tomorrow. Quite possibly could be here for uh, the rest of this week. Uh, I'll, I'll just say this. We've been working on things, as all of you know. 
This is a mission that I've committed uh, to providing uh, the best information from the best sources, from the best entertainers. I want you to be entertained. Are you not entertained? <laughs> what, that? what movie was that from? Uh, one of the Roman uh, movies. I think it was maybe it was I think it was Gladiator, right? Gladiator. I think it was Russell Crowe. Uh, but Eric's going to be here. I'm just going to tell you, and I've been telling you, you know, support us. If you do, right, we're going to do great things together. Uh, yesterday, over the holiday, uh, we ran some $5 Liberty Gold pieces. Right, those are the quarter, the older ones, not the newer ones, the older ones. Uh, the, the 1866 to 1907. And I, I've got 40-ish. I love the ish part. But I got 40-ish of these. They're 365 bucks. But you're going to be saving uh, $15 a piece on these. Uh, it, you know, you look at now, you look at a $20 gold now, $14.55. You buy four of these at, at three sixty-five today. Uh, that's fourteen hundred and sixty bucks. So uh, it, it, it's not the best deal of all time on five libs. It's like the second best deal of all time on five dollar liberties. Because um, I think that one time I got either added or maybe even five bucks below it. But you never get to buy fractional gold this close to what a 20 is. You know, you think about gold up to almost 20 more bucks today. Uh, you, you know, you sit there and Peter Hug talking about, hey, listen, gold's going to be 1500 bucks before the end of the year. Uh, Red Book just came out today, confirmed, which I, I'm surprised, but confirmed U.S. government data about December retail sales. It really, when you think about it, think about all the store closings. This year, 2019, they said that we, we're going to break another record. There could be more than 10,000 store closings this year alone. I mean, well, I mean, obviously, look at Payless. Payless, 2,100 stores gone. Right? The liquidation sales are starting to, you know, I'm sure the wives are out there. You'll have to go get them. And it's just getting started. And, and that retail apocalypse, you know, we've got a couple of winners. Right. Amazon's a winner. Uh, Walmart's a winner. Everybody else are mostly losers. That's not, you know, we got the, again, the same kind of a thing going on in the retail environment. Maybe a lot of these companies, you know, how would you feel if you're a retailer and you find out today that Netflix and Amazon didn't pay any taxes? Right? And you're sitting here trying to make ends meet and you're, you're going slowly going out of business and these guys that are eating your lunch aren't paying their fair share. Uh, but U.S. $5 liberties, again, the older ones, the older liberties, $360 a piece, 800 951 uh, and put them away. Listen, take advantage when we get fracks, especially this close, Don't you know, because really, uh, even on deal, right, when we run them on special uh, most of the time, you're looking at paying, uh, you know, somewhere around 40 or 50, as much as 60, 70 dollars over a 20. Here, you're, you're within five bucks at 800 951 And numbers are starting to, to, to get weird again, right? The, so the retail and the sales number, that was a shocker even for me. Record amount of people now, 90 days or more past due on cars. Student, boy, student loans. People not paid on student. Huge jump in December. Uh, I think all these deferments are starting to come up now. Uh, so we now have shattered the record for the amount of people not paying on their student loans. Could you imagine what would happen to the economy if people actually had to pay? They can't afford it. Well, now the latest out, the middle class, according to the latest numbers now, 
the vast majority of the middle class is only one missed paycheck away from poverty. I told you. I told you. And you know what? Here's the problem with that. Is how many of them are one more year away from poverty because the Fed is saying there's no inflation. Forget about just missing a check. Right? Here we are. This is, you know, look at the numbers. And this is why you can't believe just the number. Hey, unemployment rate's 4%. Okay, well, that's a good number. What does it mean? Nothing. It just means, well, I'll tell you what it means. It means most of the jobs created today don't allow you to file for unemployment. That's a, Sorry, but that's what it means. Then you start thinking about expenses, and they say that, no, there's no inflation. Really? Well, I there's no inflation if you don't have to pay rent or a mortgage. There's no inflation if you don't have to pay for health care. There's no inflation if you don't have to buy a car. There's no inflation if you don't need car insurance. Right there. You go, yeah, okay, then there's no inflation. Right? If you don't need a roof over your head, there's no inflation. I mean, I said I told the story yesterday about my buddies talking about. So you know, and and I and I said this, you know, we're we're all fifty-ish. You know, the I think the oldest guy is probably fifty-five in the group. I'm like the youngest guy, right? And I'm going to be forty-nine. And and his family and my family, we similarly. He's got he's got two daughters. I got two sons. He's got one daughter out of the house, one getting ready to go out of the house. I got one son out of the house. Got another one. You know, getting there. He he's got the uh, ten thousand dollar deductible insurance. I got the ten thousand dollar deductible insurance. Right? I was telling him, hey, you know what? They took away about the third of the stuff they used to cover ten years ago, and now I pay seven fifty a month. And he started laughing. He pays twelve fifty. I'm so glad I don't live in Cal. That's why people don't want to live there, right? And it's not his fault. It's not. Uh, there's no inflation. Are you kidding me? $1,250 a month just for insurance. And it, and it ain't the good one. Either, right? It's not the Obamacare. The Obamacare, get, but they get better insurance than I do. How does that work? Now, the same way it works when Amazon and Netflix don't pay taxes. Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm going to talk to you about the shrinking middle class when we return. So everybody's broke. Uh, the state of Illinois, well, we know how broke they are. They're now going to start taxing your retirement accounts. Uh, get ready. And again, and I've been telling you, they've been circling our wealth, right, like vultures, right? You know, you, you ever go out and you're out there, you're hiking or whatever, and you, you see the vultures circling, right? You know what that means, right? Hey, there's a kill down there. Something's dead. That's what they're doing to our wealth, right? Like vultures just circling, slowly tightening the noose. And the best part is they don't even tell you that they did. Well, that, you know what? That's not fair. Come on, double. Be fair. Okay, they do tell you. You know how they tell you of the... Fine print on an electronic statement <laughs> that nobody has ever read, right? It's kind of like, you know, we're a little bit like Congress, right? Hey, to know what's in the bill, you got to pass the bill, right? For us to understand what the law really is, they've got to have already taken our money first. And then we're like, what? <laughs> right? it's, like, it's like all those people and their taxes, Wait, what? What what do you mean I I didn't get a refund? Well, you know, on that new tax law, uh, we we slipped a few extra bucks in your paycheck, and uh, you needed to adjust for that. Right? We didn't know. Why? Because we didn't read the fine print. Right? So they send it. They they tell us all this stuff. Again, it's all encircled now. Remember, and I'm going to keep hitting this point. This is the biggest thing so far this year was the advisory committee for the Treasury Department. 
right? Hey, we got a problem. Foreigners aren't buying our debt. I don't know if you saw, you, well, I'm sure you didn't. January's numbers for the Treasury auctions. The biggest drop in foreign participation yet. They're dumping, right? Because, well, let's face it. Hey, we're, we're buying a lot of our stuff from China. You know, we got to, you know, we got to do business with them. Right? And, and, and we got to balance our reserves out. And remember what they said to the Treasury Department. We need to find a domestic source. <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> hey, who's the biggest sucker we know? Right? Uh, well, where should we go? Right, we know most people in this country now can't even afford a thousand dollars. Right, seventy-eight percent of the people that say they're middle class say, "If I miss one paycheck, yeah, I'm poverty." No one's got any money. Twenty-two percent of people that claim they're middle class actually don't make enough money every month to pay their bills. They say, well, how do they get my credit cards? <laughs> All time record I did. Listen, they're gonna they're gonna stop paying. Look at the auto loads, look at the default rates, look at the credit cards, start paying to the pay attention to the default rates. I'm telling you. And now we need a new domestic source. Now Illinois comes out and say, hey, we're gonna start taxing retirement money. Right, to pay to pay for pension. We're going to tax you so we can give it to the retired government worker. By the way, don't feel shocked for those of you that don't know. 16 states already do what Illinois is going to do. And I know, oh, we got this great tax cut. A lot of people didn't. Right, and then when you start factoring what your state's going to be doing to you, yeah, it, it, it doesn't work. And now we need new domestic sources. I'm going to tell you right now, right? We're already talking about, hey, forget this bond selling stuff. That's got to go. And, and, and even if we are hanging in there, which I'm not sure we are, but let's just say we are. Hey, we're hanging in there. We're doing better than most. They're going to stop selling the bonds because they don't have enough buyers. You understand that. And I'm going to use Japan as the example. This is where we're going. It's, it's simple. It's not complicated. Japan went bust 30 years ago, a little over 30 years, about 32 years now. Their stock market today, and I say today because this is a good time for Japan right now, has only lost half of its value in the last 30 years. It's actually gone up here in the last 10. Right? It's, you know, they, they, it's not going to stay there, but, but it's gone up in the last 10. But for 30 years, forget about getting no return. Okay. It went from 40,000 to 10. It's now at about 20. How did they get there? Well, the answer in a word is pretty pretty simple, right? Too much debt. And when it all finally came unglued, the Bank of Japan, over the last decade, has entered into the largest buying of assets of debt. The world is everywhere. Well, you know, we're right there with them. Right now, the Bank of Japan owns 43% of all government debt, which equals 1.1 quadrillion yen. Yeah, you heard it right. So we know what comes after trillion, right? Quadrillion. They're the, as far as I know, they're the first ones to get there. 1.1 quadrillion yen they own. Only cost them half of their wealth. 
The other half's on its way. Patriot Radio News Hour. Final segment coming up. Make sure you pick up some of those $5 libs. You're going to be glad you did. 800-951-0592. We're down to 26 $5 libs. Listen, can't replace them. It goes up almost 20 bucks just today. What was it up? Five, six dollars yesterday? I mean, put them away. 800 951 0592. These are the older. You know, think about it. These coins were five dollars. They were five dollars all the way up until 1933. Even in 1971. Okay, even in 1971, they were like $8.75. I got them on a fantastic sale at $365. This is what they've done. They took $8.75. The criminals took $8.75. And now made it cost you three hundred and sixty-five bucks. That's the equivalent. If you had eight dollars and seventy-five cents in your bank account in nineteen seventy-one, you need three hundred sixty-five dollars today just to be even. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Uh, just to go along with the debt that we've been talking about, you know, like I said, we're 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 stuck. <laughs> I we don't even talk about how much debt these corporations have. All these zombie companies, uh, it's going to be a painful end. Signs are, are everywhere. Credit exhaustion has gone global, which means the global growth story is over. It's, this is how they view growth, by the way, right? It's debt. Revenues and profits are sliding. Wait till you see it. I already told you. We we had a a a tax break high. Right? I mean, right? Amazon and Netflix didn't even pay any taxes. They're gonna have to start paying. Revenues and profits are sliding. Lending is dry, is drying up. Defaults are rising. Those are all facts. Qualified buyers don't want to borrow more. The ones that that could. Hey, we, we got enough. We're okay. The ones that need it, the banks are like, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we already loaned you uh, billions, and you, you can barely pay that back. How about no? And all of a sudden now, we're starting to see all of this lending drying up. You're starting to see lending standards tightening up. It just means slow. I know they don't want to tell you about it. I'm going to give you this analogy. Two weeks before Bear Stearns went under, their CEO went on television, went on the idiot box on CNBC and Fox, made the made the whole little tour, was on Bloomberg, telling you how great a shape his bank was in. Because it's what they do. Right, remember, what was it? Uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, it's puffery. It's okay. Everybody knows the CEO's lie. 800 Nine five one zero five nine two. Five dollar liberties, three hundred and sixty-five bucks. Everybody take care. Listen, tomorrow don't miss it. Eric's gonna be in the house. Remember what I told you. Support us. We'll be back. Mm-hmm.